This is training for absolute quantum yield measurements with the Quantaris QY Plus spectrometer. I'll show you how to load different types of samples and we'll run a quick scan. To start, press these two knobs on the right to choose the monochromator. We'll be loading the top chamber, so I'll choose excitation source A, then press the power button. We're going to measure the quantum yield of a sample of P3HT dissolved in THF. P3HT has well-known absorption properties that we'll use in our test. We'll completely fill the cuvette before loading it in the chamber. I've also prepared a cuvette with pure THF to use as a reference. There's a sample holder for quartz cuvettes that you can use while preparing your samples. Twist the ring on top to remove it. The two halves can be separated to install the cuvette. Once it's in place, cap the holder with the ring again to secure everything. This sample holder is also useful if you'd like to flow nitrogen to remove dissolved oxygen before measurement. Just use a rubber septum with an inlet and an outlet for nitrogen. Let's load up the software. We'll choose the monochromatic light source and select single scan. When it asks for the excitation wavelength, we'll use 500 nanometers, which is near the absorption peak for our material. Remember to hit Apply before selecting OK. Now we're ready for our quantum yield measurement. Let's install the sample before returning to the software. This holder makes it easy to grab the cuvette and load it into the integrating sphere. Here's another view from inside the chamber. Remember to close the door or the software will not respond. Once you're ready, just click OK and the measurement will begin. When the first sample is done, you'll have the option to load another, but we'll cancel and jump to our reference measurement. We'll load the reference the same way we did the sample. Once you click OK, the reference measurement begins. After the reference is measured, the quantum yield is automatically calculated and you'll see it on the bottom line. Let's zoom in to get a better look at the data. Now you can see the excitation peaks from the reference and sample on the left, as well as the sample emission peak on the right. Our scan is complete. Before we finish up, I'll mention a couple of other sample types you might be interested in. Here we have a sample tray for a thin film or powder sample. I'll load up a thin film of the same material, P3HT, and open up chamber B on bottom. You'll notice a screw holding a reflective plate in the integrating sphere. Let's remove that to put our sample in place. Be sure to tighten the screw again so the plate is secure. We'll also pull out this knob to choose chamber B, which is used for thin films and powders. 
If you decide you'd like to flow nitrogen for an inert environment, find these components to set up the nitrogen flow. Here's how to set it up. This inlet is installed above the integrating sphere in chamber A. Then you can proceed with the software as we did before. Our final sample is a cryogenic liquid sample. You'll need this Dewar flask holder which you'll find near the spectrometer. Let's set it up in chamber A and tighten the screws to hold it in place. If you're trained to use liquid nitrogen, you can fill up the Dewar. When performing cryogenic measurements, solvents that vitrify at low temperature are recommended. We'll be using pure ethanol simply to demonstrate the loading procedure. Let's seal it with a cap to contain the liquid nitrogen. Then you can close the chamber and conduct your measurement. When you're done with the Dewar flask holder, leave it in a nearby fume hood for ventilation as the liquid nitrogen evaporates away. Now that your measurement is complete, you can turn off the spectrometer and close the laptop to let the next user know you're done. For more details on the Quantaris quantum yield spectrometer, refer to the hard copy SOP near the instrument. Thanks for your attention, and as always, remember to work safely.